Hello everybody. This is a lesson for solving ratio problems involving parts and wholes. We are going to use ratio and rate reasoning to solve real world and mathematical problems. We're going to use tables to compare ratios using our knowledge of equivalent ratios. So let's go ahead and look at our start problem here. This really is to get our brain thinking about ratios. And looking at all of these numbers, we're trying to see how are they the same or how are they different? So I know looking at C, this is probably the smallest form of the ratio I can get because I can't multiply it or I can't divide it any smaller. But looking at these other guys, I know that I can make these more friendly or equivalent ratios. So I'm going to go ahead and look at my first one here and see how many times uh, can a number go into both of these evenly to make an equivalent ratio? Well, I know that four can go into both of these numbers. So let's do four. And then I would have two to three. Whoa, what do you know? Look at, that's the same as that one. Now let's try this next one in the B box. So I know that three can go both into six and nine, and that becomes two thirds also or two to three. Woo, that's the same as C over here. Now let's look and see if D follows that same pattern. I know that five can go both into 10 and 15, and 10 divided by five is two, 15 divided by five is three, and what do you know? They are all the same because they are equivalent ratios. All right, looking at number one, we have here a little bead set, a little diagram that we're gonna be paying attention to here. It says Tessa and her grandmother are decorating Tessa's quinceanera dress using two types of beads. They plan to use a total of 900 beads arranged in the pattern shown. How many of each type of bead do they need? So let's see, I have uh, two beads here. I have a rhinestone and I have pearls. So I'm going to go ahead and make myself a chart that says um, rhinestone. Oh, I don't want green though. Rhinestone, pearl, and then the total set. So if I look in my picture here, I have one rhinestone and I have one, two, three, four, five pearls. All together, those beads make six beads. Okay. Then it tells me that they're going to plan on using a total of 900 beads. So in my total section, I can go ahead and write 900. Okay, so I need to figure out, just like we did in our previous lessons, how can I get from 6 to 900? What am I going to multiply 6 times? So what I'm going to do is a quick long division problem over here to figure that out. 6 goes into 9 one time. With three remaining, bring down your next place value. Six goes into 30 five times evenly. With none remaining, bring down your next place value. Six cannot go into zero, so we have 150. It is being multiplied 150 times. So what I know about equivalent ratios is that whatever I do to one part, I have to do to the other part to make it equivalent. The same is true when we're talking about the whole, when we're talking about the total. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to multiply this times 150 and this times 150. Okay. So one times 150 is 150. And then if you can't do this in your head, please, by all means, write it out. Five times zero is zero. Five times five is 25. Five times one is five plus two is seven. So then we have 750 here. We know our answer is right. If we look across this section, 150 plus 750 is 900. So we have the correct answer here. So it says, how many of each type of bead do they need? Well, we know because we filled out our chart, they're going to need 150 rhinestones, 750 pearls, with a total of 900 beads. Okay, and this is just going through what we talked about. Now let's try problem number two. A store is handing out scratch-off cards to its customers. For each card, a customer wins either a coupon or a free t-shirt. 
The ratio of coupon cards to t-shirt cards is 9 to 2. The store orders a total of 8,250 cards. How many of the cards are t-shirt cards? Show your work. So what we'll need to do is we'll need to start with a chart. Okay, so we know the things that we're comparing are coupons, free t-shirts, and then the total amount of scratch off cards. Okay, so looking at our first ratio, it tells us here is that the ratio of coupon cards to t-shirt cards is nine to two. So I can go ahead and fill that in. Then I need to think about, well, how many total were handed out? We're gonna add these together. Nine plus two is 11, okay? Now looking further at my problem, it says the store is handing out a total of 8,250 cards. So that means I can go ahead and pop that in there in the total amount of cards. And just like the last problem, I wanna see what did I do to this 11? How many times can I multiply this to get this answer? So we'll do a quick long division problem over here, 8,250 divided by 11. Now 11 is a lovely number to work with because one times anything is itself. So it's easy to find um, an answer that can go in here. I know eight times 11 is 88, so that's too many. I'm gonna start with seven. I know seven times 11 is 77. We're going to count up 78, 79, 80, 81, 82. That's five. Bring down your next five. And this is this works so nicely. Five times 11 is 55. We have none remaining, but we got to bring down our next place value. 11 goes into zero, zero times. So we have a quotient of 750. So if I want to have equivalent ratios, equivalent parts, I need to do the same thing that I did here to these two guys. So we're going to multiply this times 150, sorry, 750, and this times 750 so that we can get our answer here. Okay. So let's see here. I'm going to do, we'll do red. So 750 times 9, 0, 45, carry the 4. 9 times 7 is 36. Sorry, 9 times 7 is 63 plus 4 is 67. So 6,750. So 6,750. And then we're going to do 750 times 2. 0, 10, carry the 1. 7 times 2 is 14 plus 1 is 15. I can always check my answer by looking to see does, oh, I forgot my place value comma there. Does 6,750 plus 1,500 equal 8,250? Yes, they do. So I know that my answers are right. So it says how many of the cards are t-shirt cards? Because I've completed my chart, I have my answer right here. Okay, Raul is mixing a cleaning spray. The instructions say that they need to combine two parts of vinegar and one part vi one part water. Raul wants to make 24 fluid ounces of the spray. How many fluid ounces of the vinegar and how many fluid ounces of water should Raul use? So there's two ways to do this. We're going to do it just starting with our chart that we've been working with. Um, we know we're comparing vinegar to water. And then we have the total solution when we put those together. So we're starting with two parts vinegar, as it says here, and one part water, as it says here. So two plus one, we're going to have three ounces if we're just making one tiny little set. But it tells us we're not making one tiny little set. We are going to make 24 fluid ounces. That's how much Raul wants to make. So what I need to figure out is how many times can three go into 24? I know three times eight is 24. So what I can do here is multiply times eight to make an equivalent ratio. Two times eight is 16. One times eight is eight. I know that if I add 18, sorry, if I add 16 plus eight, 
I'll have a sum of 24. So my answer is correct. So it says, how many fluid ounces of vinegar? 16. How many fluid ounces of water? 8. So that we can have a total of 24 fluid ounces. There's also another way to do this with a tape diagram. We can say this is the 24 fluid ounces that we want. And we know that there's three parts. There's two parts vinegar and there's one part water. So really what we're doing is since we've divided it by three, we know that 24 divided by three is eight. So each one of these sections is going to be worth eight. And I know that eight plus eight is 16. And eight by itself is eight. And looking at our last, uh, our last problem here, Emily makes 75 pins to sell to the school craft fair. She uses two designs, a star and a bumblebee. She makes two star pins for every three bumblebee pins. How many pins of each type does Emily make? So let's go ahead and start with our chart here. We have stars. We'll do some bumblebees. And then our total pins. Okay. So looking back at my problem, it says that she makes two star pins for every three bumblebee pins. So if we were to draw that out, we'd have star, star, bumblebee, bumblebee. That would be five pins altogether. So five goes over here. Okay. Now it says down in the problem that she wants to sell 75. So how do I get from five to 75? Well, we can do a quick division problem here. Five goes into seven one time with two remaining. Bring down your next place value. Five goes into 25, five times evenly with no remaining. Sorry. So we know that we're being multiplied by 15 here. So just like we did in previous problems, to keep it equivalent, we're going to do the same thing to the part as we did to the whole. So 2 times 15 is 30. 3 times 15 is 45. If I were to add these together, 30 plus 45, I would get a sum of 75. So I know that's correct. So how many pins of each type does Emily make? Looking at my chart, she's going to make 30 star pins and 45 B pins. So that's it. If you have any questions, please message me on Canvas and I would be happy to help you.